and sort of just clawed back, you know, one frame here, one frame there, and it wasn't, you know, prolific, but he kept kept to his task, and and he came through at the end, and that shows real character. Yeah, especially against the anticipated player, because Clayton Castaldi making his debut on the Pro Series after that incredible World Championship win in Malta last year. A lot of people were keen to see what he could do, and to start with in that match, as you say, it looked like he was picking up where he left off last summer, but Aaron Davis, maybe not top of the list for who's going to win a tournament, but he's one of those players in the next group down that on his day can beat anybody, and you wouldn't be at all surprised to see him make a very deep run. Well, this tournament's been thrown wide open with what happened yesterday and last night. Um, go back to Simon Webb and, you know, he sort of tipped Phil Harrison from the offset, which you'll be pleased about that he's still batting away and played fantastic pool as well yesterday. Yeah, I was on the comms um, on the Christophe Lambert Pisani match last night, but I could see the scores rolling in and, and I saw Clayton Cristoli was, was going 1 0, 2 0, 3 0. I thought, wow, here we go. And then when we finished, I walked back into the arena, just caught the tail end of it. And it was, well, it was fabulous for Aaron Davis to come back and, and stick, it, stick to, to his task. And although. I don't think he's been very well. Somebody said he, he, he's been a bit ill. He had a stomach bug last week, Aaron Davis, so he's not been able to practice as much and a bit bit under the weather so also if you take that into consideration you know to keep your mind on the job fair play to Aaron Davis. He certainly kept his mind on the job there he's playing a great shot playing the loss of turn but be very happy the, the red going over the bottom right as well. He's blowing the tournament wide open the top four seeds losing Phil Harrison is now the highest remaining seed when I was on the match last night with Chris Mellon and Brian Halcrow, and that was just incredible. Um, Brian, Brian Halcrow never missed a ball, but M Chris Mellon's break, I mean, it, it, was, it was a sledgehammer break. First when he went dry, but all the balls, you, you couldn't believe how they came out. Brian knocks him in. His next two breaks, he went in off the same left-hand centre back both times where the cube has gone into the side rail, come back, hit a cluster of balls and shot back into the middle. Um, well, I think one of the... One of Brian's breaks, he potted three yellows, and, the, and you don't have to see it. Normally, the, the, the group with a small number of balls is something goes safe somewhere. The other four are actually just in the middle of the table, just a dot to dot finish. Unbelievable thing. And Chris Mellon, with the two frames he rattled off in, in under a minute, both finishes, he, he never missed a ball, and he got B7 too. It's just an incredible, incredible match. That's the kind of performance you need to beat, Chris. I think Brian's been one of the most improved players over the last couple of years. I mean, that sounds maybe strange to say for somebody that's been around at the top of the game for a long time. But did struggle a bit in the first season with Ultimate Pool, but he's had some great results the last year or two, and it's now starting to be regarded as a very difficult draw. Brian, I've known Brian for many, many years, and you know when he started the game, um, turned up on the, on the tours, real solid performer. But, you know, when he, the older rules, he was a very good safety player. Um, you know, if a war of attrition, he didn't mind sitting in there for hours if he had to. But also with the change of rules, and the game's become more open. He himself didn't feel that anybody, not that, I said this last night, that not as though they disrespected him, but didn't, I don't know, appreciate the, the play. He can play open pool and attack. They just think, well, he's, you know, if it gets a bit tight, he's going to be very good at that. But he, in a sense, you know, he's not a big potter, but Brian is a big potter. He just, it, he doesn't look like he's not running around the table at 100 mile an hour blasting him in like some of the younger players. Yeah, and I think a lot of players found it quite tough. There were so many big names when Ultimate Pool started that a lot of people that were probably seen as favourites for tournaments in other areas suddenly weren't the favourites because there were so many good players. They've had to kind of earn that respect and he's, he's done very well reinventing his game. Seems like he's enjoying these rules now. Aaron's another player who's actually very attacking, but it doesn't always look it. He looks like he had quite a measured style, but actually, if you watch the shots he's playing, he's a very positive player. Very Qu good cueist as well. Quite unusual the way he sets up as well, where his, his head's to the, to the right of his cue. You know, most players have got the chin right on the cue, and his is to the side. And you also think, you know, is he aiming straight? But he's, he's obviously playing sort of out of the one eye, if you like. But yeah, great cueist, very smooth striker of the ball. He's been doing a series of videos on social media with impressions of other players, but he's definitely got one of the styles that's easiest to do an impression of because of that very distinctive, as you see there, queuing under his left eye. It's 
was never going to be able to get perfect position on the eight ball unless he brought the middle pocket into play, but he's finished a bit short of where he was intending. Well, he has his shot. It's uh, the cut up into the top left. Like you say, if he wanted to get right behind it, he was bringing it into the middle bag. If he'd overhit it, it could go in off, so he's making sure of having a go at this, but this for the opening frame. Beautifully cued. Oh, I see a cue ball going airborne. No friends. No, I mean, that's one of those breaks you look at it and you're like, how has nothing gone in? The cue ball's gone skywards. Not that that's always necessarily indicative of a, a perfect shot, but you can see the power he got into it. John's game is built around that very big break and then being able to take out the clearances afterwards. 11 years ago, he won the world title just up the road here at the Imperial Hotel in Blackpool. Nice opening shot in his frame there from Davis. He's kicking the other yellow out. Obviously, he knew he was going to land on this one at the top. Still a dodgy yellow down at the bottom left-hand side of the table, Mark, where it's just stuck behind a red, so there's no formality finish here. He's got a bit of work to do. Yeah, no balls, particularly near that one, so although there's a decent margin to play into, he's going to have to work for it. He's pretty creative. I think that's perhaps one of the elements of his game that's a bit underrated. You see him go about some finishes that actually pretty high tariff and always looks in reasonably good control of it. wonder if he's actually looking to go into that yellow right now. Well, he tried to and he's come around the back of it. And now it's now become a heck of a lot more trickier now. Yeah, you can see what he was thinking. I mean, he obviously had the angle to drop in behind it because that was the line he ended up taking. He could have made a case for that. From the demeanour around the table, it feels like he still has a plan and is still comfortable to go for these. I think he's just come up just a roll short of where he wanted to be there. You just saw him stop in his tracks as he stood up. I think he's struggling to find an angle now to get down to this bottom table. If he strokes this one into the corner, he's not going to have the angle on the one in the middle to get down there. So I think you've got to play into the middle with the yellow that's more central right now. Now then, that looks straight to me. Yeah, I mean, exactly as you said, it always looks hard to leave the angle on this ball. I think he was trying to play on the ball to the middle of the previous shot and left the wrong angle on it, then trying to leave an angle on the ball to the top left corner to come down the left-hand side. Well, the birth of this was not being able, not moving those two balls apart when he when he played the yellow down at the bottom, bottom of the table mark, and this is going to take some tremendous queuing to get anywhere near this. And that's the best you could hope for. He's left himself a double into the middle. Yeah, it might not have looked much that, but actually forcing the angle from where he was almost straight, that was actually a pretty good shot. Well, these, these sort of slide to the right when you play these, so he wants to play it a little bit narrow into the cushion. He'll stop the white dead for the black in the same pocket should he make this yellow. Ooh, just caught the angle. Now we're going to see John Rowe with a first go at an open table and the ball's in front of him. So this is his chance he's been waiting for. That may well be that his first shot's the most difficult one. If he can get in, the ball's all looking nice. I'd be tempted to take the red up into the top left there, and it's on, just on the rail, because if you miss that, you're going to snoot your Aaron Davis on that yellow. Just a bit of security. Can he get through directly to the one? Oh, he could get through directly to the corner. That was OK. I thought he had to play a plant to that one. Both players' second match of the weekend. They... I'm wondering if we'll play safe here, you know. You know, this is only second cue at a ball. And if he was, if he takes one of these into the centre and he didn't sort of rattle it, he's going to leave Aaron Davis on that yellow. So I'd be tempted to play over to the left-hand side of the table, just bump that red off the rail and leave him snookered. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think particularly because the yellow is in a fairly safe spot. The time you wouldn't want to do that is if it's in open play and could be potted out of the snooker. Although, obviously, now he's potted that ball to the middle. Should be fine to continue with the finish. Oh, you're definitely going now. <laughs> Good positive play from John Rowe. Yeah, and that is generally his game. He's, I mean, he's got a good all-round game, but the big breaks and clearances are what he's best known for. These balls link up pretty nicely. Drop the ball into the left centre. Well, he's almost managed to overrun that. Well, luckily, he can get to that right into the top right-hand corner. Just checking there. I think he can just stop the white dead here, and he's on that red into the bottom. Black will be in the middle, probably. Fortunately for him, it was one of those finishes you could go about in several different ways. Everything was quite open. Yeah, there'd be a slight uh, sigh of relief there when he hit over on that and found out that the red went past the yellow into that corner. All the same, it's 1-1. Every time you see him, we comment on this. I almost think he's, he's moved further across since we were last talking about it. It's one of those things that's just so hard to change and you wouldn't really want to change because actually his single ball queuing is pretty impeccable. It's obviously getting through the ball very straight. I mean, typically that kind of thing comes about because you've got a very dominant eye, but it's become an almost exaggerated thing. I suspect he did it when he was young, when he was a kid and perhaps didn't you know, have the coaching later on and then by that time it was so ingrained. He comes from a family of very good curious. His brother's a, an excellent snooker player, as is he himself. Oh yeah, there's no need to change it at all. <laughs> the, you know, the result of everything he cues is pretty damn good. He's embraced Cyborg as a nickname, although I mean, that was kind of a joke of the fact that he looks quite robotic around the table, but it's actually he's a lot of fun off the table, as, as we've seen from... He's increased presence on social media over the last few months. <laughs> Generous, the, the table playing big as it often does when it's had new cloth put on. We talk about this quite regularly. I mean, that, that is the kind of shot that wouldn't have dropped on a club table, but... Equally, there are other aspects of playing in these conditions that are more difficult so to take the rough with the smooth. Oh, that's turned out well. Yeah, just enough. Now then, will he be looking to take that now? I think he might. Yeah, it's pretty nicely on it. It's not going to get a better chance. He's just seen about the cannon now, because when he plays his yellow into that corner, the cue ball is going to hit that red that's... To just to the left of the yellow and he's wondering if it's going to go and get in the way of the other yellow that's to the left hand side in an ideal world he'd like to drag through this gap and not contact that red at all and I think he's played it has he played it enough so he can still get the yellow into the corner I think he can he's judged it pretty well because he he was playing it in such a way that if, if he knocked, he'd ideally he'd knock it in as well, but he played it at such a pace that it would come back and still leave the gap, which is good news for Aaron Davis. And it's rewar his reward for playing a positive shot there because there was a way you could have played that where you just made a thinner contact on the red and just thought you'd slip past it, but you risked getting stuck behind it, so decided to take that into account. Been a little bit unlucky there to land stuck to that red. Just a little bit of Walker queuing now as he plays the yellow into the bottom right. He played a nice controlled shot there at the top coming through the gaps of the reds off the two rails, but just dead weight to drop this in. Nasty little shot for early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's amazing how queuing over a ball makes it so much harder. We played it rather pacey for my liking and I just thought dead weight would have been the, the name of the game there, wouldn't you? Yeah, very much so. I mean, if he'd have been able to get to more of the cue board, he could have tried to screw it in and play to the left of that red. But from the angle he had, it looked like finding a path around the ball was always going to be hard. It seemed like 
just accepting where he was was the best he could do. I mean, from the way it's come off, he maybe had a shade more angle than it looks from that camera. Either way, he's not left himself anything here. He's going to have to play off two cushions. Try and make the ball to the left centre. Good effort, but never an easy shot from where he was. That's the worst result, because he's knocked that yellow pretty much dead, so... John can go about this finish with the, the confidence of knowing he's not going to leave much, even if he did inexplicably have to bail out. Well. <laughs> he's bailed out early on, and not by choice. Well, he's just saved me making a mess of it, because I was just about to say, well, he's <laughs> Aaron Davis isn't going to come back to the table anyway, and <laughs> he's going to miss that. Well, you didn't see him missing the clearance, never mind that first ball. Difficult shot for Aaron, but one he wasn't expecting to have, and this is a bonus chance for him. Oh, what a great piece of queuing. Well, John Rowe will be kicking himself. Very surprising miss from John, and costly outcome. Aaron played a poor positional shot to not clear up the first time he was at the table, but he's made up for it with a great yellow down the left rail. Maybe the ref said to Mike could have knocked that red in that middle. <laughs> That's a fair break. Oh, where's oh. the cue ball? Wow. Oh, that was a good break, and then a couple of balls nudged into the white. So we're taking another look at this. You see the power he gets through the pack. And the white wasn't going anywhere near the corner until it contacted that red. No. Not a bad layout here. So we see the two balls clustered together, whichever colour he chooses, but the fact he's got ball in hand means that he can try to negotiate a way into that. Yeah, this would be my shot. Leave this little angle and try and pot this and kick into the red and yellow on that side rail, opening all the balls up. I play this with a fair bit of pace as well. I want the cue ball to come right out of there. You don't want to stay in, the, in amongst it. Well, that's odd. I don't... Well, I can't believe he just... He must have surely tried to move those two balls. He didn't seem to hit it hard enough, did he? I mean, he had ball in hand. He could have he put the cue ball quite close to the yellow. He, he wasn't quite on the bulk line. I think he could have given himself a bit more space and made the angle. I mean, he can obviously play into it off this ball. But well, yeah, stretching about six, well, five foot across the table, queuing over that red, that's made this shot ten times hard as well. So these, shouldn't be, these two balls shouldn't be stuck together now. They should be open in the, open in the table. They should be mopping them up. I don't know if he just ran out of time there. He's quite made his mind up on the shot. Seemed like a nothing he shot he played there in the end. And that's always the trouble. When you play the cannon like that, if it doesn't come out perfectly, you don't have any other balls at the top of the table to get back to it. I would have thought he could... Can you not see the shadow down at the bottom of the table? As he looked. Surely he can get through to the yellow at the bottom of that bag. Yeah, because he can then he play, can. He can. play the one over the bag, one to the centre and the one up the left rail. What's he doing? There's no question he could see that yellow over the bag. But you could pop that screw back into the... All right, he might not leave the best angle in the world, but he could play the other into the middle and the, and the, the ball at the rail. I'm... I'm, uh, I'm quite surprised. I'm bemused. Yeah, I've been amused by a couple of the shots so far in this frame. Not sure he's going to like the result either, because John's now got a clear advantage. More reds on the table and in the snooker. Well, what John wants now is ball in hand. He can put it up at the top, top of the table, take out that red, and he's got finish up. The only thing I would say, the snooker he's played here, it's not a difficult one-cushion escape to pot the ball we've just been talking about over the right corner, and then he will obviously have the one to the left centre waiting for him, so... He's still got attacking options. Well, the attacking option here, we've got an angle on that one in the middle, which means the cue ball's going to be sailing off towards the top right-hand side of the table, which is exactly where you don't want to be going, with the other yellow that's stuck on the rail. Yeah, there wasn't much he could do there, because obviously he had limited control. If he was a bit straighter on the yellow to the left centre, he could bump it off the red that's to the right of it, and force it over to the left, but I don't think he's quite got the angle to play that. Ginger Boy's last couple of shots, he might play a double with this now. <laughs> well, he's left himself a little bit stuck out here. Now, bearing in mind, he cut a really good yellow down the rail in the previous frame after John, John Rowe had 
had left him uh, that opportunity. This is slightly tougher, but bearing in mind he has just played a very similar shot to this. Yeah, he's played a really good shot there. It was clever. He had to just use what he could of the red and was able to just hold the angle. In a way, the thing that makes this easier is that you can cut it pocket weight down and the white is naturally coming out. Yeah, that's a good shot. Not a gimme of an eight ball. Cue ball sailing towards the middle. I don't, I, I'm just trying to, to see if, he, if the angle takes the cue ball just off the... if it glances into that red. Does he have to pull out? He obviously no, he thinks he can just get by it without clipping it and going in off. Yeah, if you can just get past the red and hit just below the right centre, this isn't too bad. Played it nice and firm. Be here five times this year, so we'll get to experience all the seasons. Well, yep. not the best hit break. No, he's made a ball. Sheared off the side of the pack a bit. Actually pretty lucky when you see that replay, not to end up in the, the centre. Coming off the jaw has done him a bit of a favour though, because it's parked the keyboard in the middle of the table. Well, if that yellow is not stuck to the black ball and goes into the middle bag, he's, it, to be fair, all these yellows are open. There's one attached to the rail at the t towards the top of the table, but as we've just seen in the previous two frames, that's not going to pose any problem to him the way he's been potting balls up the rail. But the thing is, he's got to get a yellow and there's nothing really on, so he's going to have to take the reds. Yeah, it can be frustrating that when you're the one that's had the break and you've left a preferable colour set to have to go the other way. Yeah, I'd lost myself there for a minute because the red yellow gone. I just automatically thought for a second he was on yellows. I thought he'd knock one in. Too early, Mark. Yeah, 10.30 in the morning. It's no time to be playing pool. We should start at no. lunchtime. No, she playing the loss of turn. Pretty good shot. Yeah, that's where these rules have really changed the game because you can play a positive shot like that, leave your opponent in trouble, throw the gauntlet down, but in a position where you know they can't necessarily do much with it. Also, it progresses the frame along as well, Mark. Before you'd have it, you'd, in, the, in the old, old rules, you'd be there for, for hours with somebody covering a couple of bags and sitting there, right, I'll stick on that. And, and the rule changes, obviously, for the better. Makes the game a lot more watchable. Yeah, and one expansion that's led to the game as well. We see Ultimate Paul's plans for expanding to America. Very exciting new development for 2024. Absolutely. I mean, we think the scale of pool is big here. We've got over 500 players playing across 35 tables this weekend. I've seen tournaments in America where they have 200 plus tables in the same room and that really is quite some spectacle to behold. I played in Vegas back in the 90s and there's a Valley National tournament there and that was, uh, that was American 8 ball and had 132 tables. That was what? in the Riviera. That was, in fact, the tournament I was thinking of, so I, I, can, I can tell you it's expanded since you were there. Yeah, the, the Valley National, which is their sort of equivalent of the, the national tournament for people that play in the local leagues, hold an annual Vegas event, as we see a great, great shot. shot from Aaron. You know, I was fortunate to go over there a couple of times and play in the 8 band and 9 ball. Of course, the Riviera is no more. No. Fallen victim to Las Vegas' constant demand for modernisation. Shame as well. Legendary hotel and casino. Nice control there again from Davis. Just looking to want to check the angle he wants to leave himself so he can... Play this red up the rail, get onto the next one into the bottom left hand corner, but he has to get the angle right. And he's going to have to top this through a bit off, to the, off the side rail and towards back towards the black ball. 
Try and get both reds in the same bottom left-hand corner. Yeah, he needs to target the cue ball to close to where this red is that he's playing, but it's off straight, so he's going to have to go the long way to get... Well, in fact, it, it was a little straighter than it looked. Wait. I thought he was going to have to come off the cushion. Well, this is, this is tricky now because it's now very hard to get onto the black ball. He's, he's basically played this route to guarantee himself the shot at this last red. If he went the other way, obviously it's a fraught with more danger, but if he did get on it, the cue ball near it, it made the black easier. So this is the, this is tricky. You've got to come through all these yellows and make sure he leaves the black into that bottom right-hand corner. Well, he didn't mean to be there. Now, does the black pass into that centre pocket? If it does, he's been lucky. And it obviously does the way he's got down. That was not the intended position. So, John Rowe, three frames behind now. Best break. Saw Aaron shearing off to one side of the table. John went off the other side. But actually, the outcome is pretty acceptable for him. Incredible. Um, we'll go back to yesterday in some of the match. I, I mean, I was on the Christoph Lambert, Ryan Pisani match, and those two were sledgehammering a break. Balls everywhere. And about four or five dry breaks. Whereas that was not the best connect connection to a break by John Rowe there. Look how many balls have got in. <laughs> Makes no sense. Chris Mellon, I'll tell you, if he's watching this now, he'll be cursing. Because he, he got his break was fantastic last night and just dry breaks, in offs, all sorts, balls all over the bags, leaving for his opponent. It's every Paul Flair's favourite thing to moan about. I mean, the, the randomness, I suppose you can say, is does make it the more viewable. I mean, obviously the top players would rather we played races to 20 and perfect conditions and everything was the same every time, but slightly shorter races and the fact yeah. that you don't guarantee a ball off every break. Yeah, massage after each frame. Well, if you're prepared to offer that service, Tony, I'm sure the players will be happy no, to take you off. Keeps the muscles all toned and sort of loose. Oh, this is better from John. This is what we've come to expect from him. Yeah, he's wasted no time getting rid of these yellows. Just have a little check. He, does, he can just drop this in now, run forward about an inch, stop it dead. Well, that's it, yeah. Plonk this in, black in the centre, and it's 4-2. In the th blink of an eye. Makes the game look so easy when he's playing well. That's how everyone aspires to be able to play. Massive break, roll the balls in. Well, still two frames behind, but definitely not giving up. As Davis breaks us off in the seventh frame. And now it, the break has turned on Aaron Davis, and he's gone in off. John Rowe, ball in hand, anywhere behind the line. It's amazing these things come in little bursts and clusters of frames that, it, you know, you get a little bit of luck and then you'll get a couple of frames come after it. Then you, all of a sudden your opponent starts having a bit of bad luck. It also seems to all come at once, all in one direction. Probably want to pot this and screw straight back into this other red and remove it from this little gang of yellows. And he has succeeded in doing so. And he's also on the red at the top. So, red's all open, and this could well be Poor matches can turn round because it can all be on the break when everyone's so good at clearing up. Clever shot that. Apart from the cue balls going too far towards that red, he was trying to just to open up that left hand middle for the red ball that's say on the pink spot. That's because that had no pocket until then. But he's just got the cue ball to go a little bit far. Danger here because he does. If he puts this red, he can lose that yellow and it could stick behind the black, behind his other red that's near the rail. There's a lot can go wrong still. Yeah, because if you just stop it where the yellow is, he'd be fine. But I think the pace he's going to play that, the yellow's going to bounce back off the cushion. 
Oh, he'll be happy with that. He will be. That went round the traffic when it could easily have ended up in front of it. That was one of those you had to play it and just put it in the lap of the gods a bit. Nice control there from Rowan. That's absolutely bang on. You can just pop this in now. Black in the same pocket. And in the blink of an eye, he was three behind. He's only going to be one behind. He got a bit closer to the yellow, though, didn't he? I see your eyes there, Mark. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he's having a look. This is closer than we think. I think he just gets through. He's going to have to put a little bit of side on it. But in she goes. John Rowe wins another one. Two quick fire frames from the row. Yeah, two quick fire frames, and that was a good clearance there. He played a couple <coughs> of good shots to find that pattern. Judge the cannon well on the ball three from the end. Cue ball. And again, we see another in off. Another in off. Look at the reds. Massive split. Look at these balls. Look at those reds. Well, they're begging to be potted then. There's a moment. It looked like the red was going to play goalkeeper, but in the end, it helped the white in. It'll be gutted with John Rowe because that, if, if the white stays on the table, that's that's level in the match. Whereas now Aaron must be thinking, you know, thank the Lord for this because he can get, he can get back to two in front. And it's so painful when you just clawed your way back into a match, then suddenly it looks like he's very likely to end up two frames behind again. We saw Aaron last time he had ball in hand start the pattern in a very strange way. This time it's a lot less to think about with this pattern. You can take it in pretty much any direction you like and you should still be fine with it. I like this shot coming down here for this for this red early. Everything's there, you know, the, the four reds and the black are all in a very small, tight area where you've got to do absolutely nothing with the cube ball except stop it dead. Yeah, and that's good thinking because a lot of players are going to be looking at the table there thinking with cue ball in hand you'll clear up at the top of the table because that's where you are, but that one at the bottom could have been slightly isolated. Well, the thing is, because he had ball in hand, he got to choose his own angle with that one at the top of the table. So... This again doesn't have to do it, just run it in. Ball in the middle next. Two reds up at the top and 5 3 to Mr. Davis. That's the trouble with having a big break like John. If you somehow don't end up at the table afterwards, chances are you're leaving a good clearance. Still OK, he's finished an inch short of where he wanted to be, but he's still got space. If he can't hold it direct, he can screw over to the right-hand cushion. Yeah, just play a positive shot now, just punch it into the row, you, you know, you're not going to overrun it. Perfect. Slight angle as well, just come towards the middle of the table now, for the black in the centre. And that was a really nice pattern he's picked out there. We we debated earlier whether he's gone the wrong route, but that time, very well thought through. Very smoothly done by Aaron Davis. Almost looks like somebody else's arm is playing that, that on the back of that cube from somewhere else, doesn't it? Oh, and he's found the same corner pocket as John. Unbelievable. That's, I think that's three in, a, in offs in a row. That's, that's a pretty unlucky one, because <coughs> if you look at where this cue ball was going, it's cannon towards that pocket. Yeah, it was safe and then just took a heavy contact on the red in the middle of the table. And again, balls nicely spread around. Maybe not quite as easy as the last frame, but not too far off. Well, I suppose you could say it feels like justice for John. He's going to feel a bit hard done by from the last frame. He's got an immediate chance to make amends. These were a little trickier than the last finish, however. Yeah, it's all about the ball that's in the middle of the bottom cushion. If you can get on that or flick it out, everything's reasonably plain sailing. The winner of this match will be playing the winner of Kyle Cope and Simon Fitzsimmons in the last 16. Kyle Cope currently holding a 4-2 advantage in that one.
one of the newly promoted players, Kyle Cope, that's tipped for greatness and seems to be getting off to a good start already this weekend. Played very well yesterday. Yeah, he played very well and looked dangerous from the start. He didn't look like somebody that was playing in his first pro series by any means. To be fair, though, when you come through that challenge at all, I mean, it, it's a bloodbath. It's unbelievable talent in there. So when you actually, I think it's more of relief like, when you get to this, you can chill out a bit more. Well, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the case for saying those tournaments were harder to win because although the field was, on average, softer, 288 players in that event last year, anyone that won one of those, which Kyle did, was clearly having a good weekend. Oh, that's a really good shot from John. Got a bit lucky not to put the cue ball, but came up with a good recovery shot. Well, nearly went in off there. Routed the cue ball in the jaws. Can he make the double? Will it go past? I think it will come off the cushion and through the gap of the two reds. Well, he's gone for the cutback. Obviously, he couldn't make the double. We didn't feel he could. And there's one that got away for John Rowe. And it's not the first one he's let slip. It's come at a bad moment as well. Had a chance to claw his way back into the match. Aaron's now got a great chance to get onto the hill. It's just a red near that left-hand middle is the trickiest ball on the table for Aaron. He's left himself a little angle. I wonder if he'll just now... I think I would, is try and just, just move that. You can do it right now off this ball. You sort of soft screw into it. Just go into the cushion first and just rub it over the middle. It's made it slightly easier. Still a little bit tricky, but it was easier than where it was positioned before. So that's a, it's an upgrade for Aaron Davis. Yeah, it's an upgrade all round for him because where it looked like he was going to be, he was sat in his chair where the frame got away from him. So he'd be very happy to have this chance and the chance is getting ever better as he goes on. So far he has looked the stronger of the players, but it's not exactly been a one-sided match. And it looked for a moment like John was going to get back into it. Then had a chance in this frame to yet again try and claw back to only one behind. It just felt like a tough morning for John. He's always just been kind of chasing it. Seen him pot some good balls down the rails already in this match. This one's a bit further off the rail than two earlier on. Pretty good. Just pot this red, bring the cue ball back a couple of inches. He's going to be one frame away from winning the match. Chance he shouldn't have got, but it's a chance that he gratefully accepted. Well, that's better so far. Cue ball looking safe. This is any last minute nudges. Unfortunately for him, all the other balls are looking safe as well. Well, this is a chance now to get over the line. That's probably the, the better break. Certainly the best cue ball that controlled break, but again, it's come up dry. Yellows look the colour for Davis. Just going to drop this in with a little bit of right hand side and try and get onto the yellow at the bottom of the table. And he's on there. If he can get rid of that one off the bottom rail and then the yellow that's just above the cue ball, now he wants rid of these two and then the other four. We're all again joined together 
and we'll link to one another and a simple black into the bottom corner and that will be end of the match. When you have this kind of lead, you're always going to get the match closed out as quickly as possible, not get yourself involved in anything silly. Now, you should pop the cue ball around the, off the bottom rail, a bit right-hand side into the left-hand side rail, and then through the gap of the, the two reds and the red near the middle. If through that gap there, into the middle of the table, and they'll be in prime position. Yeah, exactly as you say. It's quite a nice gap, that. It's just the kind of natural route off the two cushions. He's got the long one in the, the, the two yellows at the top. He's going to take the left-hand one there, surely, now, because he's... The position onto the next one's pretty simple. Just screw the cue ball back a little bit. And it's just finding w which his preference is for these two. More difficult pot, this, but good ball to get off the table. Yeah, I think he's looked at that and thought, I don't want to be tr trying to, to, to weave between those two balls last to the black. Whereas he, he's gone for the bottom two first. And in hindsight, now he's made the right decision because he's played a very good shot and put himself in plum position and just... The end is nine out for John Rowe. Unfortunately for him. But it's been a pretty assured performance from Aaron Davies, so he's looked very smooth. He's phenomenal cubing balls down the rail. Yeah, it's very hard to find much fault with this performance. He's going to be happy with the morning's work. If John's break had gone differently, it could have been a different match. Yeah, he's missed a couple. There's been two balls in the match that John's missed, and they'll he'll, he'll sort of, you know, it won't dwell on them, but he'll look back and think, you know, that, that changes the entire dynamic of the game, especially when it was quite early, wasn't it? Yeah, he missed that very surprising red to the right centre early on in the match. So, warm handshake from John Rowe. Disappointing morning for him, though. Just never really got started in that match.